In today's video, I'll be comparing the 1080p gaming performance of an i5-2500K, a CPU released in Q1 2011, to a Ryzen 5 2600X, a CPU released in Q2 2018. Why am I doing this, you might ask? Well, I'm just interested to see if a CPU released almost a decade ago can have similar gaming performance to a CPU released within the last couple of years. The specs of today's test for the i5-2500K, I'll be using a Gigabyte GA768XP D3 motherboard. I'll be using 16 gigabytes of Corsair DDR3 RAM with a latency timing of 99924. I was going to use the stock cooler for this test, but due to the temps I saw in my i5-2500K, I've swapped that out for a Deep Cool Gamex 400, which I think is one of the best price performance air coolers on the market at the moment. And for the video card, in both systems I'll be using a Gigabyte Radeon RX 570. As mentioned, I'll be comparing this to a Ryzen 5 2600X, and it'll be on an ASRock X370 Gaming X motherboard, with 16 gig of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2933 MHz, the timing of that RAM is 14, 17, 17, 30. I'll be using the stock cooler because I find the AMD coolers are pretty effective. And most importantly, I'll be using exactly the same video card, a Gigabyte Radeon RX 570. Now, onto the benchmarks. Just one addition to the video before I do get into benchmarks. I have overclocked the i5 2500K to 4.4 gigahertz. I haven't overclocked the Ryzen 5 2600X because I haven't seen much gaming performance improvement through doing that. Hey! Cuidado, niños!
So looking at the overall results, I have to conclude that you can build a very, very good gaming computer using an i5-2500K in 2019. Admittedly, it's significantly overclocked, but those old i5-2500Ks, a 4.4 gigahertz overclock is nothing um, special. Uh, people have overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz, for example, so the actual overclock that I applied was nothing special. Um, just working through the benchmark results in CSGO, the 1% lows came out at a tie, and the Ryzen 5 2600X had a small advantage, 5 to 6% advantage over the i5 2500K in the average FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that was probably where the Ryzen 5 2600X had the biggest benefit. It had a 12% benefit on the 1% lows, and um, only a marginal benefit on the um, average FPS, but I think I have to call out with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, if you played that at lesser settings, uh, you would probably get a better improvement on the Ryzen 5 2600X than you would on the i5 2500K, simply because the i5 2500K is going to become CPU limited a little bit earlier. Um, World of Tanks Encore. The 1% lows on the i5-2500K were surprisingly good um, and much better than the Ryzen 5 2600X. I don't really have an easy explanation for that. I ran the benchmarks three times and this is the average result. So um, I don't know if anybody in the comments has anything to say about that. Um, but the average FPS between the Ryzen 5 and the i5-2500K was almost a tie. Now looking at the um, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, again the Ryzen 5 2600X had a small advantage in both the 1% lows and average FPS. Shadow of War, um, about an 8% benefit on 1% lows, but a tie overall on average FPS. And if you look at the average of the five benchmarks that I ran, the 1% lows were a tie, um, and but Admittedly, the only time that the 1% lows were better in the i5-2500K was on World of Tanks. It just happened to be significantly better, which makes that probably look a little bit better for the i5-2500K than it might be otherwise. Um, but from the average FPS, you can see that if you're running something on high settings where most of the time your GPU limited, it really does not make a huge amount of difference if you choose to use a modern gaming CPU like a Ryzen 5 2600X or something from eight, nine years ago, an i5 2500K, give admittedly overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. Now, when it comes to synthetic benchmarks, when the benchmark is based upon CPU performance, you can see that there's a significant performance difference between the two CPUs and the 2600X comes out way on top as you would expect. But where we're looking at 3D performance, it's a lot less clear cut. Thanks for watching my video guys. If anyone has any feedback, please leave it below. If you like this video, please click on like and feel free to subscribe to my channel. On this channel in the next couple of months, I'm gonna be adding a video review of my new Metabox Alpha S and also a new Xeon gaming build that I'm putting together. Cheers and catch you next time.